Here in the archives, we've got a lovely collection all about the construction of part of Bush House. And these are the papers of Arthur Stevens, who as a young architect was employed as clerk of works for the building of the northwest wing of Bush House. So the central part had gone up a few years before in 1925 when he came on the job. And as part of his duties, he kept lovely photographs. We've got two albums and they are meticulously captioned and dated. And he starts with clearing the site preparatory to beginning work. And I love the fact you can see horses and carts used for taking the rubble away because they could cope with the uneven terrain. And that is Kingsway up there in that gap between the buildings. I want to show you a few more things in here, particularly. Especially this, because this is the only photo we've got of the elusive Irving T. Bush, American millionaire. He had already built Bush Tower in Manhattan, 1916 to 1918. And here he is turning up to inspect the progress of works, looking every inch the American plutocrat. And it went on apace with the construction. And we know it was impressively fast, not least from this lovely Evening Standard article. This is from June 1929, with these wonderfully somewhat overexcited headlines, how London beats America in hustle building. It's the speed of the progress, the modernity, the all over Americanness of everything that clearly really impressed this reporter. It's a lovely piece. It's a very high profile building and it's intended for luxurious flats, for tenants who are going to pay well because they want to impress. And it's all beautifully recorded here, all of the construction. And here in February 28, is Mr. Skinner, I don't know who that is, um, supposedly laying the first stone. He's not doing anything. It's these people behind him who are doing all the laying and there's not a hard hat among them. Health and safety is a very different thing in 1928. And you can see the steel skeleton of it rising here with the first part of Bush House behind it on this rather foggy looking day in February. And there's the spire of St. Mary the Strand behind. And of course, that view is completely hidden and lost now. And here it is walloping up and it's got that stone outside, that exterior is almost, almost all completed. And here's the original part of Bush House with that famous, famous frontage. And I love all these pedestrians and the taxi rank you can see there. And there's a lovely sequence here where in May 28, there is a mason at work. I hadn't realised this is how they constructed it, but the stone is already in place on the exterior of the building. And then he, rather precariously on this scaffolding with planking, is working in situ. So he's got the rough stone and there is his completed carving and it's beautiful. There was no room for error there at all. And the last one I want to show you in here, the final one in this album, it's this lovely piece of social realism and it's two workmen so focused on their work one isn't even looking up but his, his workmate here he's staring directly at the camera and it's beautifully lit and it's just a lovely direct gaze I really really like that photo very much and there is further proof of just how disruptive it was for all the poor people who were already hard at work in their offices in Bush House having a building site right next door in this lovely cartoon by H.M. Bateman, no less. Anyone who's worked in central London with building works going on nearby will really sympathise. Mm -hmm.